All right, we have a lot of ground to cover with my guest today. He's a fan favorite and he is back here on stansburyinvestor.com. Please uh, welcome back to the show, Gerald Salente. He is the founder of the Trends Journal. It's a weekly magazine analyzing uh, current events and trends. He is the Trends Forecaster. Welcome back, Gerald. Good to see you. Love the white suit. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me on. You know, it's summertime. You got to go white, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> Before Labor year. Day. Before yeah. Labor Day. Before you Labor Day. Yeah, then it's, I think it's against the law after Labor apparently, Day. Apparently. Apparently they yeah. arrest you. Um, we, have a <laughs> lot, we have a lot of ground to cover with you today because it's been a while since we touched base. I want to talk about the economy. I want to talk about oil prices. I want to talk about real estate. I want to talk about cryptos and I want to talk about gold. But first and foremost, how is Gerald, my friend, doing? Well, there's no fun going on. You know, the whole atmosphere has changed. You know, one of our top trends for 2021 was Boca Midnight. You know, Boca Raton, you know, it's a lot of like old people my age and they go to uh, early bird specials and then they're in bed by 10 o'clock. That's their midnight. That's what midnight has become. You, you go down to New York City, my pal's playing, you know, they're finally allowing them bands to play. In Brooklyn, they're closing. The, they stop playing at ten thirty. You know that's when you used to start. You know, so everything is dead. There's, they, they've sucked the joy out of life in so many ways. So on that level, I'm sad. And particularly, I see young people. It's a whole different world. And you know, this is unprecedented. In in like that, everything changed. And well, and so anyway, that's how I'm feeling. I've never. I've never been more bored in my life. No, we got to change that. Well, let, let's have some fun with this interview, even though we have a lot of serious topics to cover. Um, you know, you talk about New York City. So on that note, let's talk about the economy in ge general. And is it recovering or not? No, it, it's, a, it's a fake bounce. It's the Biden bounce. And it's the same thing around the world. They're dumping in all this cheap money, printed on nothing and backed by nothing and artificially blowing it up. Let's talk about New York City. Oh, you know what the office occupancy rate is? Oh, um, 20%. Hey, same thing out there in San Francisco. 20% office occupancy rate. How about all the businesses that depend on a thing called commuters? In the United States, the average office occupancy rate, 32%. So what's going to happen to the commercial real estate sector? I mean, before, you know, you were allowed to go back and forth. You know, you remember what New York used to look like in 2019. Hell, oh, there were four rent signs all over Fifth Avenue, Madison Avenue, down the West Village for rent, for rent, for rent, for rent. Now you see for rent, for rent, east side, west side, all around the town. This isn't coming back. Oh, remember when this all began back in 2020? Oh, it'll come back. Oh, it'll come back. It's not coming back. Yeah, the numbers are all there. You're looking, you know, I, I was just reading some stuff coming out about how many, the poverty rate going up. It, it, it's, it's off the charts, yeah. you know, and, and it just keeps getting worse. And you yet, know, so, though, sorry, continue. No, no, no. So, so the bigs are getting bigger. Here, deal, this is from Wednesday, July 14th, front page Wall Street Journal. Deal making pumps up profits at Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. All the mergers and acquisition activity. The bigs are getting bigger. All the cheap money's pumped up the bigs. Oh, here's the deal. I'm Citigroup. I'll borrow the money from the Fed at 0.35%. But you, you, you little uh, plantation worker on Slavelandia, we're going to charge you 27% interest. All right? How, how, how evident is it of everybody that the banksters are running and destroying life for everybody else? The bigs are getting the money for free, buying up merger and acquisition activities going through the roof. You see it happening. And now Powell came out again and said, well, you know, I mean, what am I, six years old? How many times are you going to tell me, oh, inflation is temporary? You know, screw you. It's not temporary. Oh, yo, lumber prices went down. Oh, yeah, they went down, but they still up 50% of where they were before. Here, this just came out. Producer prices for construction materials and services soared 26% over 12 months 
And this is according to the Associated General Contractors of America. So for the average person, inflation is killing them. It is. Rents, rents. Yes. Well, gone up six for, for they can't afford to buy houses they're renting oh what's happening again the bigs the blackstones the other ones buying up homes and renting them out so what this is going to do and it's done it's made the bigs bigger and everybody else poorer the numbers are there the billionaires got eight trillion dollars richer in 2020. Yeah, yeah. There's such a disconnect, Gerald, and to the point of rents, and you're talking about New York City, and I'm here scratching my, my head uh, as someone living in, in the city now, is that, you know, you're talking about all this empty office space, and it's hard to rent even, um, you know, apartment buildings where people live, yet rents haven't budged. In fact, they've gone higher. They've gone higher. Right. So a three bedroom, you can't get that for anything less than than 10,000 a month in New York City. Yep. So inflation is real. It's here. It's and, real. And, and but here's the deal. They're, they're lying about it. They're lying about it because, well, first of all, the inflation numbers are rigged. We're talking about housing prices, got, whether they've gone up like 18 percent in, in a year that or housing prices aren't put into the CPI. You know, so anyway, they're making the numbers up and they want to keep saying inflation is temporary because they are afraid they're going to scare the gamblers by raising interest rates. Thank you. OK, but hold that thought. Hold that thought, because I want you to fill in this blank. I want you to fill in the blank here. You say they're destroying the economy. The Fed is afraid to raise rates because the markets are going to. They're going to crash. They artificially propped up. You know, they didn't teach me about zero and negative interest rate policy in economics 101 at graduate school. I mean, how long is they doing this? Again, the bigs are getting the money for free. They're gambling like crazy. So now when interest rates go back to 2018, when you had Trump pushing Jerome Powell to lower interest rates. This is before the COVID war started because the markets were going down as interest rates were going up. Remember that. So now they're lying about that we're not going to raise interest rates. Inflation isn't going up because when interest rates go up, the housing, or the housing market goes down. Oh, the mortgage rates are now back down to February lows. And now... The, people are refinancing and buying again. When the mortgage rates go up, when interest rates go up, the gambling game stops and this whole thing collapses. Everybody knows it. So they're lying about inflation. It's temporary. Who are you talking to? How long have you been saying this crap? The numbers are there. Oh, I didn't make these numbers up. No, they came out from the Contractors Association. So how long can they continue with this game, Gerald. So can't, can't they just say, you know, we'll just hold off on raising rates for another one, two, three years, or does the music stop at one point? Listen to what they've said. They said they were going to begin to raise interest rates in 2023. First, it was 2024. 2023 to 2022, the markets went berserk. I'm thinking to myself, what are you talking a year and a half? And, and, and oh, and the equity markets are going down. And then they reversed it. And then he came out again and he's saying, and that's why gold prices are going back up. Because people with a brain know where this thing is going. Gold goes up when inflation goes up. You know, gold goes, again, this inflation is unprecedented in the, in the terms of the way the prices have gone up. And now they're locking down again in other parts of the world because the Delta variant's coming, the Delta variant. Oh, and it's more contagious. Yeah, but it's less deadly, but we won't talk about that. Oh, but anyway, so now the supply chains are going to be disrupted again. So what's going to happen? Or is, or, or is the economy going to go down real bad because they're locking up again? And they're forcing, you saw it happen in France just yesterday, uh, Monday, in Germany, one country after another. If you don't have vaccination, you can't go to a restaurant. Oh, and you got what, a 46, 45% vaccination rate? What about the other people? 
Tourism? Oh, no. Don't go to Spain. Don't go to Portugal. Oh, what, how much does their GDP depend on it? Oh, only about 13% in Portugal, about 12% in Spain, Turkey, one after another. Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. So th th this is unprecedented what's going on. So you ask how long could they do it? They're money junkies. They're addicts. They'll do anything they can to keep the game alive. This thing should have crashed, what, in 2012? But what did they do? $29 trillion, according to the Levy Institute at Bard College, the Federal Reserve pumped into the banksters. Oh, and they're too big to fail. You're just a piece of garbage, but hey, they're too big to fail. And what do we have over here? Deal making pumps up profits at Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. There was this guy, gives you name Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, he has this, he gets a whip, had to make it, couldn't buy the Walmarts back then, drives the money changes out of the temple, whoop, has the last supper, then the cat's hanging on the cross. All right. You don't screw with the banksters. And that's who's running the game. And it's not a game anymore. They are, they've, they've destroyed the middle class. They've done away with the, the Robinson Patman Act, Sherman, the Sherman Antitrust Act, the Glass Steagall Act. One, one, one act after another that prevented the bigs, the antitrust acts from the bigs taking over everything. And, they're, and all they're doing is making it worse for everybody else, particularly with the scam of negative and zero interest rate policy in a country near you. Oh, when I was a kid, you used to have a thing called savings accounts. Yeah, the people used to make extra money, put it in the bank and get interest on it, and then retire and go to Florida. Gone. You, you, you know, the only way you can put your money in is, hey, come on to the gamble in the stock market. Investors, stop using that word, they're gamblers. Do they want, so they want that money flowing into the stock market. Oh, yeah. And look at, look at all the, the young, look at all the, the, the money flowing into the, uh, the stock market from first time investors. You right. wrote about it in the Trends Journal. The numbers are pumped way up. You get no money from the bank, so go to the stock market. You got it. Where, where are you going to get interest on your money as it's going down, as it's losing its value? Again, for me, gold and silver. Yeah. And I know, you know, and again, talking about J.P. Morgan Chase, how many felony counts were they convicted of? Oh, only five. Only five. And one of them was rigging the precious metals market Slap on the wrist, a $900 million fine. Hey, how come Jamie Dimon isn't in jail? Maybe they should have put him next to Epstein. Oh, no, no, the bigs don't go to jail. Oh, you went six miles over the speed limit. Where were you? How many drinks did you have? Stand on your head and repeat the alphabet backwards. But the big banksters robbing us right in, oh how about this how about all the wells fargo's and all the other ones the city how about all the dirty deals they did making up stuff for customers and charging them extra they get a slap on the wrist for it again you got the drug dealers that people call big pharma you got the military industrial complex and you got the gamblers the casinos that are running america and most of the world let me ask you this. What role do you think commercial banks and the bigs will play if we will go down the road of a Fed uh, digital dollar, a Euro digital dollar? We already see China rolling out a digital version of their currency. Oh, they'll get in the game because, I mean, who's the Federal Reserve? Again, there is federal as Federal Express, as all your listeners know. And, oh, we're talking about J.P. Morgan Chase? Oh, aren't they one of the big banksters that, that own the federal part of the Federal Reserve? They're in the game. Oh, look, who's that? look who is our Treasury Secretary. Oh, where did she come from? Hmm. Oh, wasn't she the head of the Federal Reserve? So it's, it's, it's one big club and you ain't in it, as George Collins said. <laughs> you and I are not in it, but we're no. in our own cool club, uh, Gerald. All right, you, you talk, I know you love gold. I know you love silver. You've been attacking crypto for a long time. And when the China mining news uh, came out, you know, the crackdown, you were like, look, I told you guys so. So Bitcoin's still on, on your radar. You think the crackdown will continue? Yes. Again, we were, we were very positive with Bitcoin. We, we, it, we go back to, I think it was July, uh, June 2020. It was around $10,000. We said when it breaks over 10000 it's going to spike. 
But we kept saying over and over and over, it's a very volatile market because the more governments crack down on it, the lower the prices are going to go. Because the governments are going to go digital, just like, as you mentioned, China is. They want to know every penny you spent, where you spent it, how you spent it, what you spent it on, so they can get their tax money. Because people in government and the bureaucrats, they don't work for a living. They're in the system, so they need the money. So they're going to they're going to go digital. Every nation is going digital at some point when they go digital, the cryptos go down as we see it. But that doesn't. And again, our breakout point, we have a breakout point for silver for Bitcoin. If it goes below twenty five thousand, you can see it going to ten. Hmm. OK, I, I think I've asked you this in the past. It just always surprises me because. Um, you know, Gerald, as, as a libertarian, as, 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 a, as a freedom fighter, um, I would think you would embrace the decentralized system of Bitcoin. Like, do you like the idea of Bitcoin, even though you might not be an investor? Yes. Yeah. Anything to break away from the, the gang. You know, I'm fine with it. And, and talking about I'll, I'm also going to be a speaker talking about libertarians at Ron Paul's conference nice. on uh, the um, Labor Day weekend, September 4th in Washington, DC. Fantastic. And so I'm very honored that he asked me to, to be a speaker there. And, and I believe, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not in anything. I'm a political atheist. I look at things the way they are and not the way I want them to be. Libertarians aren't in favor of antitrust laws. I am, you know, because I, when I grew up as a kid, you know, there was the butcher, the baker, you know, everybody, the street was filled with people that you knew. And then the bigs took over. They, they wouldn't let A&P and Sears, they kept pushing them back so they wouldn't take over everything. And now the big zone, every, every time I go into like, there used to be a thing called hardware stores and stationary stores when I was a young guy. I go into a, I go into a Kohl's or, a, or not a Kohl's, a, a Home, Home Depot or a Staples, and my heart breaks when I see the people working there. They have no future. They have no future. Yeah, oh. Amazon, you have no future. Well, Every time they deliver something to me, I feel bad for these people because I know how little they're making and how it's going to be so hard for them to move up. So yeah, I'm in favor of putting these things back in place that used to exist. You know, do you think, you know, and when you speak of that, of, you know, going to your neighborhood butcher and going to your neighborhood fishmonger, I mean, these were, these were careers, these were professions, right? It wasn't like you were just going to some guy who learned how to be a butcher in your local Acme. Um, do you think we'll revert back to that? Because we already see it with 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 food, people are are gardening again. They want to they want to be more in control of their food supply source. Do you not think that we will go perhaps back to the things were, Gerald? Of maybe no. we'll have a local butcher and a local and people want that service, want that 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 special knowledge from someone who knows what they're talking about. Some people, but not the masses. I mean, Maybe you're talking me. about I find, food. I want my you know, butcher I mean, to know what filet mignon is. You know, you go in and they have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at 72% of Americans are overweight, 42% obese. Look at, the, I, I, I go, I tell you, I went to Home Depot and I'm coming out. I counted 22 cars going into Popeye's. 22 <laughs> cars as I'm waiting for the light to change, you know? And, and again, I grew up, I had, you know, one of my books, What Zizzy Gave Honey Boy, is about growing up, Zizzy's the Neapolitan dialect for auntie. Here's a picture of Pepe, my Uncle Mario's dog, sitting at one of those little wooden pianos as a kid with a party hat on. <laughs> Uncle Mario had a fish store in Flushing, in Queens. I used to bring all my buddies over there. He used to sit Pepe at the piano and sing old solo mio in his ear. And the dog used to go, ooh, ooh, ooh. He used to sit the dog out in front of the fish store dressed up as Santa Claus during Christmas. This is what America used to be. These were hardworking people that lived a life, were able to buy homes, middle class. It's gone. We, we got, you, you look at, as I call them, the repulsive kins and the dumbo craps in America. And, and what do you, it, 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 there's no other voices. 
Look what happened in France. They just had an election three yeah. weeks ago. No one voted. <laughs> right. 35% of the people voted because they're disgusted with the criminal groups running the show. And that's what we have, murderers and thieves. Not a war they don't love and not a too big they don't love to bail out. Look where all this money went with the, with, you know, the COVID. It went to the bigs. All the numbers are there. We got peanuts. Here, go shut up. Go on. Stay home. Go on. Now, the people, you know, I'm, I'm doing what I can to turn this around. I mean, you see the magazine. Was it 160 pages this week? No ads. You know, we're doing everything we can. I held a 4th of July uh, celebration to unite for freedom, peace, and justice. I'm fighting. You know, I, I bought the most historic four corners in America, my pre-revolutionary war stone buildings, because I'm proud to be an American. I was born to be free, and now I'm having these little jerks telling me what to do and how to do it as they're stealing my money in front of my eyes and giving it to the criminal groups that have been charged with felonies, convicted of them, and they don't go to jail. They get a slap on the wrist. Fine. That's not my America. Uh Lynette Zhang, uh, who's a good friend of our show, she, she writes for your magazine as well uh, as a contributor. I asked her the question if she's, you know, completely out of the banks and if she has any cash. And I'm going to ask you this as well. Um, you know, you, you talk about your love for gold and silver and protecting your wealth during these times. Uh, would you be completely out of the banking system now? I am. I, a matter of fact, a quick story. I went to the bank, you know, we had a big amount of money there. We called up. And they had a machine counting it all up and we put it somewhere else. Why am I leaving my money, you know, a lot of dough in a bank and getting no interest on it when they're loaning it out and making money on it? How dare you? And then the person said to me, may I ask what you're going to be doing with this? I said, no. And the old me uh, would have said, you know, F you, who the hell? but I, you know, I'm trying to calm down as I'm getting older, you know. Why you would I keep my out. money in there when they're taking my money, loaning it out and making money on it and giving me zero? Zero. How criminal is that? Dying money. Dying yeah. money. I, I would have paid to hear that conversation between you and the bank teller. I wish I was a fly on the wall. If they only knew they were talking to Gerald Salente. Uh, Gerald, all right, final thoughts, bring it home. Uh, advice, wisdom, some words of reassurance, please, for the people watching at home. Well, the reassurance is for people to think for themselves and, and not get caught up into the system. You get in the best shape you can, physically, emotionally, spiritually, get strong. And again, I don't give financial advice. The thing is going to crash. Everybody, everybody that listening knows it. And they all know that it's a rigged game. So do what you can to protect yourself. And again, to me, like only speaking for myself, it's precious metals. And, and they've been around forever and they're not going anywhere. And you're going to start seeing more central banks buying them as well. And again, look for a commercial real estate crash. It's going to happen big time. And that's why, by the way, the Goldman Sachs's, the JP Morgan Chase's, the Morgan Stanley's, are demanding that their workers come back to work because they have they know what the loans are and they're invested in the commercial real estate. You go down to New York and you look at that ugly piece of crap they built that cost $25 billion, Hudson Yards. <laughs> I was going to say, wait, which one was it? <laughs> Hudson yeah. Yards, right? Empty, empty. Neiman Marcus pulled out, the Michelin Star restaurants pulled out. $25 billion. The banks just got these loans. That's why they're the ones that are forcing people to go back to work. The work, it's a new world. It, that's one of the things that the COVID war brought. Who wants to commute an hour and a half each way? And say I have 16 stories in an in a office tower. Oh, you want to work from home three days a week? Great. Now I'll only take eight stories and I'll save myself $12 million a year. That's what's going on. You're seeing the sublease thing go way up because the bigs are trying to go down and they know I could save money. Yes, yeah, stay at home. I don't need you here. So I've watched the commercial real estate sector as for regular real estate. 
It's not going to go down until interest rates go up, but I believe it's near the peak. Hang in there, okay? Oh, I'm hanging in there. I'm not going anywhere, you know. But I'm, I know. I'm you know, I, I must... I'm, I'm expressing the way I feel. I know. And you I know. know. It's an you understand how we feel. <laughs> I understand. I understand. But Italy won the Euro. What more could you, <laughs> would you ask yeah. Yeah, and they brought in Draghi, not on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gerald Salente, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for watching. We'll have much more content for you. And don't forget to sign up at DanielaComboni.com for premier access to videos and a lot of uh, other really great stuff. That's it for me. I'm Daniela Comboni.